hills and build them high Makes a long time climbing before I die I want the chance Hello everybody, welcome to a Week at Hibs by Longbangers in association with our partners Leith Spirits. I'm Mai. Hello, I'm Colin. Hello, I'm John. How's you doing? Alright. Good, it's been a good day. Why has it been good, John? It's been a, a lot of things that have tickled me in such a way that I've laughed out loud. Uh, so some of our listeners... Leon, Raymond, uh, Ewan from Down the Slope, just some of the chat around uh, Habs keeping their cards close to their chest with regards to uh, possible signings in case Man City try and give up us <laughs> on the deal. Aye. Uh, I forget I forget what the other stuff, but uh, I think Ewan was talking about uh, HSL and the Black Knight group potentially going toe-to-toe in the court of law. So having a bit of a giggle about that. I was at the gym had a wee bit of time with myself, just stuff like that. It's been good. Uh, good. Colin, what about you? All right, mate. Busy day at work. Last day for uh, holidays. I'm off till Christmas 27th now, so... You go back on the day of the derby? Aye. The Wednesday. Tuesday. Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. Are you straight into the game after the... after work? Game first? Aye. I've... Oh. Uh, well, I don't know if I'm in the office or I'm working for home. No, decided to probably work for home. So, probably be... what time's kick off that day? Is it uh, seven forty-five? Ah, it's night time kick off. I thought it was three o'clock. No, it's a Wednesday during the day. The only day that in New Year. The only, the only I... play a scheduled midweek <clears> game at three o'clock on on a working day at New Year. I, I had no idea. If we'd not had this conversation, I would have turned up at Easter Road at three o'clock. <laughs> well, not at three o'clock because then I'd have been struggling. But you know what I mean. Uh, assuming nothing happened between now and then for you to find out the kickoff time as well. You'd yeah, be able to use your uh, free membership to Albion Bar, mate, for the uh, to, to to while the while the hours away. <laughs> um, well, we're kicking off with right. So first things first, if you've not seen it already, um, there's a competition running on our Twitter to win two tickets to the Derby as we're on the the topic. Um, I suspect most of the folk who subscribe will be season ticket holders, right? But if you're not and you've not got tickets sorted because they're, uh, as I said before, like hen's teeth, then uh, all you need to do is kind of be present and engage with us on Twitter, retweet, like, comment on all our tweets between now and uh, pretty much close the play on the 23rd of uh, December. Or uh, you can also enter by going to Leith Spirits website if you buy a bottle of gin or some of their other spirits, there's rum in that there as well, and enter the code along bangers at the checkout, you'll get free postage and packaging, and it'll also enter you into the draw for the tickets as well. So two ways to win. Right, that's admin. Out of the way. This episode all about uh, the week at Hibs. So John, you and I recorded or re-recorded extra time on Tuesday night. Um, thanks to everybody who's been in touch about that episode. It seems to have gone down quite well. You were like the sensible heed. I was the excited bear at Christmas talking about the investments. So that's been like the biggest story this week. So we'll dwell on it. I will uh, touch on it but before we, we wrap up and start reviewing St. Johnson, but uh, or previewing St. Johnson. Uh, John, what have you got for us in the in the Hibs news this week? There was a, an article came up, uh, came through the, I saw it on Twitter timeline directed you to the Hibs website I was talking about the November loan watch and I was having a wee read, a read through it and I was surprised by the number of bodies that Hibs have out on loan it reminds me of Chelsea when it, I think it was uh, suggested that they had like two or three squads worth of players out on loan at one point but I was also surprised by the number of names that we have on loan that I'd completely forgot about <laughs> So I'll, I'll quickly go through the the first the first few, and I'm sure people will be f- uh, familiar with them. But the first one's Noan Kenner. So he's apparently having a, a pretty good spell at Shrewsbury at the moment. Feels a little bit like he's following Josh Vela's career a little bit, because I think that was his first port of call after he had his uh, short spell at Hibs. Too short a spell at Hibs, in my opinion. Uh, he's also been playing internationally for Liberia. <clears throat> Uh, I wanted to mention uh, an article that Liam Henderson had in the the Guardian this week, and he mentioned Ewan Henderson, his brother, mm-hmm. who's currently on loan at is it Ustend, 
in Belgium, seemingly he's done pretty well so far. 13 appearances, scored three times. Don't worry, if this is boring anyone, I'm not actually going to go through all <laughs> 11 players. However, oh, I, did want, like? I did want to touch on, uh, there's three <laughs> players that are on loan at Airdrieonians that makes them sound much more debonair than they actually are. Are they still called uh, Airdrieonians or did they change? They had to change because they went bust, man. And the Aye, so are, and are, they now, are they now Airdrieonians or did they change I think to Airdrie? Right. So they went to Airdrie United or something, and then once the time had expired or lapsed, they could then get the name back or something like that. I think Rangers will I'm do sure that. they're back to what they used to be called. <laughs> Aye. Well, they, they didn't need to pay for it, though. Eh? They just, like, everybody just fucking Aye. followed the leader on that one. <laughs> Simon says. Sorry, John. Yeah. Bill, Billy says. Uh, by no, the no, way, no. Liberia, is that where libraries come from? It's a plural, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Liberia is the plural of libraries, or is libra- libraries the plural of Liberia? Yeah, probably both. <laughs> <laughs> I was just anyway. checking, I thought that might be the case, so thanks yeah. for clarifying, John. I'm much wiser now for that conversation. Quickly wrapping up some of the players I completely forgot about Kyle McClelland at Queen of the South. I remember I him. Some, I do. Somebody mentioned that to me just in the last week or two, and I went, is he still fucking kicking about? Is he doing well? I mean, somebody told me he is doing well, but I was like, is he? Is he really? Because... Well, I can confirm, Colin, that in the last mm-hmm. month, both uh, Kyle McClelland and Oscar McIntyre have been regular starters in Marvin Bartley's back four. Mm-hmm. I think McIntyre might have got man of the match as well in the game. Sure he did. I, don't know, I didn't look that far, to be honest. But other it names... In, it was in the last month. I didn't, he did, I'm sure he did. McClelland's a really curious one, eh? Like, when you, yeah. you think he came... Was clearly not ready for the first team. Johnson played him a couple of times. Uh, played in the League Cup at Falkirk. Yep. I think that might have been his last first team appearance for us. Then was shipped out on loan. Never really be seen or heard of again until like sort of the wee updates that we get. Uh, we get here. Do, do you think he will make a first team appearance for Hibs when he comes back, or do you think that's one that will just run his contract down? Yep, contract down. I think so, and I think that's probably. Uh, what could be said about most of this list of 11 players. So you talked to there, Matty, about uh, players being shipped out and kind of like forgotten about Dylan Tate, Hamilton. Seems mm. to be doing well there. They're That's top a of the funny league. one. That's a weird one, though, right? Because, sorry, John, but in there, but th- on that one, he was signed as a highly rated Wraith Rovers player Aye. who were in the championship, not, not doing as well as they are now. Obviously, they're top of the championship and scoring a last-minute winner every game they play. But... He was a highly rated player at that level. You knew a Ray Throvers fan, I think, at the time that told Aye. you how good he was. He's never known at a lower level than we signed him for. It's fucking mental. He was really going to be Ray Throvers. He, he was um, one, I think, because Ray didn't want to lose him. If you mind, when we signed him, he went immediately yeah. back on loan to Ray uh, until the, the next window. <clears throat> mm-hmm. But it was like, I don't know whether just uh, Johnson didn't fancy him. Uh, there was a few stories. I mean, you know how true they're about, like fo- like attitude and things like that. But um, it was evident they didn't have a, a future at Hibs. Well, but, maybe he get to go to the the Marbella or wherever he came yeah. in the first summer as well. And we were like, oh, how's he not going to go? I him and uh, Dan McKay, yeah, they both kind of missed out on it. And McKay probably is on your list as uh, as well, there, John. It's almost like you've read exactly the same thing, Matt. He's the next name on the list. The reason we never saw him against Hibs recently is because he's seemingly picked up an injury while he's been out on loan. But I, I had high hopes for him at the start of the season. That I, like I saw an opportunity and space in the side where he might have an opportunity, and it was almost as if Hibs had heard me and went, "Ha, ah, fuck you." He <laughs> was this boy kid against fuck all. <laughs> Happens to us and, a lot. <laughs> do you remember a player? That Who we signed that? from, I think it was Charleston Battery when we had that link up with him, a guy Aye, called Emmanuel it, Johnson. Yeah, I thought yeah. he was. I thought he he was like permanently away. It says here that he spent the majority of 2023 on loan in the United States with Austin FC, and he's played for them for 23 times. Like I, I don't think he's ever pulled on a house jersey. I don't think we ever will. So he's still in the books, according to this article from Hibs. Yep, I could have sworn that his. Uh, is this his last year of his contract, or is this like a loan that we're... Julie, we did with Dubrovsky. He's like, right, you're out on loan till your contract's up, and then mm. that's that's kind of the end of your time with, with Hibs. 
it could be. I mean, I guess that Hibs might have just included it because he's officially out on loan. Obviously, yeah. they've got that that view to him going back there and staying there permanently. But I think there's a few players there. Like I know that there was a bit of hype around Joshua Connor, and mm-hmm. he's out at Airdrie alongside uh, Megwa and Murray Aiken. Murray Aiken's got an ankle injury, so I don't think he's been playing. Josh O'Connor scored a few goals and Megwa has been doing pretty well. I think I've seen him picking up a man of the match award and it says here that he's been playing across the, in fact, almost a little bit of a utility player. He's been playing in midfield and defence. So, I think we're bringing him back. Like, I think he should be mm. going back. And just having a wee look to see on Emmanuel Johnson's... Uh, so 2022, he signed a three and a half year deal. On the 10th of February 2022, Johnson signed a three and a half year deal with Hibs. So that would lead you to believe he's still got a bit of time left on his. Uh... Yeah. At Austin, I've got an option to make the move permanent. So he could come back to Hibs, but if Austin takes the, the option, he'll stay there. I imagine that's what will happen if he's played. He's still, How many still times, John, did you say 23? I don't know. So we still got him on Twitter. Because it comes up every minute again, and never game. Aye, like, What's yeah. this shit? <laughs> uh, there's overnight usually because of the time delay, and you're like, "What's all this shit? Who's this?" Yeah. See of the about. the names that were mentioned there. If like we've talked quite uh, sorry, we've talked at length about the the clean slates that Nick Montgomery's given everyone, and he's maybe not had the opportunity to see some of these players. Although I think he was quoted in the Observer this week saying that he watches as many games as he can as, as time allows. <laughs> If he was to take, say, a clean sweep and say, right, I don't want to see any of you back, how would you feel about that? He didn't want to see any of them back. Didn't want to see any of them back. I think that's hard. It would be harsh, especially for the likes of uh, O'Connor, Megua. Yeah. Uh, It'd only be them that I'd be bothered about. Aye. Um, <clears throat> McIntyre uh, is, is well. Aye. Aye. Like, like the ones. The ones who who had come through the development team and were at an age where they could get loaned out and it was going to be a good idea for them. For that to happen, a new manager come in and then say, I don't know fancy he's at all, like I'm no, just not going to bring you back. That's unlucky, especially when you look at how he's accelerated into the first team, likes of Whitaker um, or Molotnikov, for example. Yeah. Yep. I, th- I think that would be really unfortunate and, and a little bit unfair. But from the perspective that, so you, you've mentioned some of those players that have been brought into the first team squad and have got game time, from the perspective that it would be better for their careers to to continue to play where they're playing, like stay on loan or, or with a view to making those deals permanent where they are, would that would you still view that as being unfair on them? I'd like to see them get a chance at Hibs. Do you know that? I think if you've got a manager who's, who's prepared to play youth players, then bring in the youth players that you've invested all that time and money into and give them a go. Um, but I mean, I suppose it'd be, be a proper they're good enough. Bad like, timing thing if they were to get banned because like, they, they were they were highly rated. Go put in loan as a development opportunity or whatever the class that is, and then they've just totally been jumped by the team below them. When and that team below have done nothing compared to what their team done. Hmm. Another thing is if you do that, when it gets to the point where you want to put players out on loan that are coming through. They'll all be like, ah, fucking, I've got a sore leg this week. I can't do it. I think I'll pass a medical or, you know, whatever it is. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll, no, I'll no go on loan because, uh, Joe, you've only got two right backs now. One of them may get injured, and that'll be me. I'll be in the first yeah. team. So, I, I just think it would set a bad precedent. I, I think if you're, if you're planning to develop, develop people is to, to get them first team I football, don't think based you need on to bring what we've seen for him, for Montgomery, he's not going to do that. Nah. He's come in and picked a sixteen-year-old at anywhere. He's not got to bin the, the highly rated ones that are two years older than him. Was this just a, a, a thought that you had, John? Yeah, no, no. So uh, just to try and flip that question on its head a little bit, how likely is it that you will see some of the players that you mentioned featuring in the first team? As say, so I'm thinking about Kenna, for example, as a replacement for say Jago or or Levitt or or even Newell in that position or Megwa. So like I, I I agree with you with what you're saying that there's opportunities for players mm-hmm. so how likely do you think it is that we'll see those players that you mentioned featuring in the, in the first team because that's the, the subsequent challenge for Montgomery Aye, so I think there's a lot of variables there right um, not least of which is potential investment because that's going to change who plays, you know what level a player's going to get into our, our first team, you would think right, if, it, if it goes to plan 
then a lot of the players that we've got in the club now won't be, I imagine, considered good enough to, to play for, for the Habs where we want to go. That's maybe a little bit harsh or a bit blunt way of putting it, but I kind of think I'd like a, a nicer way to phrase it, right? That you're going to want to buy in better than we've got at a significant jump to, to kind of get clear third. So it, there's maybe like a you know, how likely we're to see them. They might get they might get six months to see if they can you know, show that they've got it. But are they going to be here in two years? I, I don't know. What do you think, Colin? I agree. Uh, yeah, I think... Uh, no, I totally agree with that. Uh, but it'd be interesting to see Kenner coming back. Though. Because um, he was highly rated, but then... Uh, like Tavernes was. And and I, I, at the time, was like, we need to stop talking these players up, but... Tav- no said Tavernes is as good as what they were even making out, but he's better than we thought he was. So maybe Kenner has as well. Aye. I, I think Kenner was... Kenner had potential. I like the look of him. And probably the loans done him a lot of good. It depends whether he wants to come back as well, which is the well, other thing, thing because he's yeah. not had the, they've had the best experience. The Hibs fell out with the manager by you know, or, or was rumoured to have fallen out with the manager, <clears> hunted <throat> away on uh, out on loan. But again, he might come back. Montgomery might look like the look of him because he's younger than Jago. He's going to have better resale value than than Jago, um, made energy etc. So there's like almost a ready made replacement for Jago in the building yeah. if you like when when he comes back. Any others on the loan watch that you want to call out, John? Or is that have you completed your summary? I've completed my summary. I think the names that we mentioned there, and out of the list of eleven, like I'm, I'm first of all was really surprised that we've got as many players out as we do. Well, I even when you see the number eleven there, eh? I mean, that's, that's fucking loads. Like Aye. to have a whole team out. And the goalkeepers out, have we? No, no, Murray Johnson was out, and they recalled him. They recalled, yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? Eleven out on loan. Some of the names, some of the names that I'd forgotten. Like I just, there's a few of them there, and as much as it would be harsh, like I think there's just some that we just will just not see back at Hibs. Their their yeah. their loans will continue almost indefinitely until whatever contract. So like that the, guy, the um, funny, Emmanuel like, Johnson, like three years, you're not going to see him at Hibs. Nah, some mental thing is there. Eh? Three years in McClelland as well. Like he never ever really looked like he was. He never looked big enough, physical. But, but we signed him for Rangers. We did, I. So Which has a wee bit of a clout about it because of where you get him mm. from, but actually yeah. it's not really it's not really lived up to it. Uh, I came with a wee bit of fanfare as well, doesn't it? It was like a yeah. we, we've done well yeah. to get him type, uh, type deal. And that was what we were doing at the time, yeah. That was the, that, we've done that with Kenna, we've done it with Tavernier. So. Melkerson, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, Colin, uh, what caught your eye in the news this week? Well, you asked me he asked me to look, and I did. And the one that caught my eye was the Guthrie um, moaning about um, the penalty. Aye. Saying that you only get them against big clubs, then you get uh, either any weak clubs, then you get them against big clubs. And I thought, well, do you agree with that? It's terrible because I had no idea who you were talking about. Because <laughs> obviously we're such a big club and he's he's playing for such a weak club that it doesn't matter. Yeah. But I, 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 I'm not a big fan of the whole big club, weak club thing. Hmm. A really funny thing on this, right? So I say really funny. So that's totally subjective. I was with a couple of pals last night, uh, one of which is a Rangers fan. We spoke about him before on on the podcast. We used to bam him up, you know, when they were going through their uh, their demise. We would we would car share, and honestly, we could time it like you'd get him in the car uh, in Verkeithen Park and Ride, which is about thirty seconds away from the bridge, and we could have him in the huff by the time we were halfway over the Fourth Road Bridge, just be bamming <laughs> him up about the football. Uh, and last night, as he actually raised the subject about the, the referees and Rangers with the penalties. Kind of, it's, oh, it's hilarious with Rangers getting the kind of penalty of Rangers and all the memes and that, but Celtic get mayor. And I says, Aye. it's not really about the ones they get, though, Steve. It's the ones that you get, they didn't give away. Mm. He's that's just bad referee. And I was like, well, for fucking two years, you didn't give away a penalty. It's bad referee. Yeah. It was, yeah. and, and so it's it slower. And anyway, proper got the hump. It was like, Kim, when you're sitting and you've got like, the, the, the other person, you get them to be wink mm. to see. <laughs> watch this <laughs> one of those ones but uh, Guthrie um, big clubs in the game. I, I mean because we give penalties so my initial thought was well how can we disagree with that because we moan like fuck about Rangers and Celtic right uh-huh. but we give penalties away against everybody else as well have we given them away against Livingston recently did they get one against us at Easter Road 
Well, did, St Mirren did. Like uh, Joe, Joe Newell. Uh, so we, and, and St Mirren, uh, when we were at St Mirren, they got a penalty against us. I, I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it was a big club thing. I, I think that no. penalty just, incident... Just when it's against us. <laughs> when it's the penalty incident there... But we 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 debated we debated it on sports scene and that and on the the you know the commentators talking about him throwing his leg in to get the the penalty. That's one of those subjective ones, isn't it? Like I thought it was a penalty. If I'm honest with you, I would have been. If it was us, I, I still stand by. I would have been shouting for it like that's a fucking stone yeah. waller. Um, but but I isn't it, really? it shouldn't it be. But it I probably can, is. Aye, but I can see the argument against it because he does. Yeah. He initiates the contact and all the rest of it, and and so you understand why it's not been given and why VAR wouldn't call it back. Because um, it's no clear and obvious. It's funny that he's went out shouting at the big, the big club thing away. Because it's obviously he's, they must be thinking, how do we end this run? Aye, like we need to get a referee's decision, and he's went down the route of going off and criticise them. They'll give us one, but it's actually I think we know they just then fucking don't. They, what is it? The don't back down, don't, double down, double down. Aye, that's what he did was when McGinn criticised them. Eh? But uh, what we get yeah. after the cup final? What was yeah. he called them? Uh, oh, that's right. what, what was it? They, they used the word. For it, you know, uh, oh, wasn't he cheat? Was it? It was incompetent, was it? Oh, I can't. <laughs> Whatever it was that he said, they did not like that because we got fucking nothing for ages. Someone, someone out there listening is shouting at, at their, their headphones just now. Going, was that? It was that. Um, it's easy, hey, it's easy out there. Come and do it live. Uh, <laughs> it's like, watching, it's like when you're watching fucking pointless or the chase and you can't answer. Aye. <laughs> so I'm going to see you. And he asked. Aye, so I, I, got something. I mean, they're definitely big club. Bigger clubs tend to benefit for referee decisions. I would have thought be generally more at home though, when you've got the crowd and that influences the decision. Because if mm-hmm. you're thinking, "Oh, was that a foul?" and you hear all that folk shouting for it, you're more like, ah, "Put this way, right?" I had this conversation watching Lassie's football last weekend. If you, if the referee's thinking about it, and a couple of dads go offside, <clears throat> calls offside. Because he heard two folks saying it, he was already thinking maybe it was, and he was mm-hmm. totally influenced by it. So, so if you've got forty thousand or twenty thousand there, you're definitely going to influence it. But no, at Livingston, though, because the Livingston are typically made away fans than home fans. So, yeah. Yeah. so on that point, would I be right in saying that earlier in the season, Rangers had a penalty awarded for them against Livingston, and it was an absolute shite, like it was never Aye. a penalty. So, I think there may be some merit in what he's saying. However, in the instance that he's referring to, he's talking shite. <laughs> Aye. So, yeah, that's a good way to put it, John. Like, there is merit in what he's saying, but not, it wasn't relevant to not what, in this game. No. Uh, in, in this game, yeah. Yeah. Uh, All right. Aye. Good, uh, good call out, Colin. Um, my, uh, obviously, we, we've been talking about the investment a lot. Today's Thursday, and Hibs made representation to the SFA. It had been sort of widely. Uh, implied that this was the day that it was going to get ratified for Foley's investment. And what Hibbs actually uh, put a statement out just at about five o'clock saying that we were just there telling them again, now we're going to formally put the request in to get dispensation on, I think it's Article 13, yep. which is about dual ownership. I quite like some of the words that have been used, like representation, making representation and ratified. Like uh-huh. they, just, they just turned up and tell them what they were doing, really. Like they were really Aye, and asked if it was all right. <laughs> flowery language. Aye. Um, Foley had had been on, so he's a year at Bournemouth um, this week. So there's been quite a, quite a bit of press uh, around him when he was on Talk Sport today. Uh, and I think he just uh, pretty much said the same thing that they were doing the right thing through the SPFR and through the SFA. And that he was going to help with transfers because Hibs need it. Uh, and that was a bit kind of the some of what he what he said. One of the things that I picked up on that I didn't appreciate before, we talked about it on was it Wednesday when we recorded? Tuesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Tuesday. No, yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Aye. And we one of the things that was talked about was how he was going to build Bournemouth a new stadium. And I thought, oh like I, I had an impression in my head that they had like a small stadium in comparison to other Premier League clubs. But he's talking about building them an eighteen and a half thousand seater stadium like but we've got bigger than that. Aye. Like aye. surely our ambitions and our possibilities like are already greater. Bournemouth Why are you not focusing? Because they've got the Premier League, but the, their stadium's only about twelve, fifteen thousand or something aye. at the moment. 
Aye, I had tiny. 14 in my head, but aye, like it's, it's reasonably yeah. small. Oh, 12 15 is probably 14 bits there, so that's good. We should <laughs> probably we'll off, page. offer that we just did, like, uh, can just buy a stand for us. We'll just mm. we'll, we'll redevelop a piece of the road a wee bit bigger and sell them a stand so they could just have it ready made. Do like that. Aye. We'll, but we'll build bigger and better than they can have 20,000 rather than the 18 that they're, they're aiming for. We've got a hospitality now, and it just can't be that hard to lift and shift the stadium, could it? Just put on a helicopter or something. I mean, you've got a billionaire. Aye, but anyway, kind of like in the, well, in the BFG where they lift all the giants at the end. Spoiler alert. With the helicopters just to just do that. that. Is, I, had all, I had that circled in the radio times for Christmas, and you just oh, fucking yeah, ruined Sorry, it. mate. I'm going to tell you who they get on the helicopters, and then you'll still have a bit of a surprise. Um, I, do you think, uh, sorry, Matty, do you think billionaires worry about things like recycling steel? So just like expanding on your idea of like sending to a stand on your thread on hibs.net talking about like the footprint of the stadium, what have you. There was a, a poster who pointed out that or queried the, the lifespan of the, the north and south stands. Mm-hmm. Could we recycle that steel and send it down the road to them and have Bill and his billions build us a bigger, more beautiful Easter road? I'm going to say yes. I have zero knowledge in this whatsoever, so I'm just going to guess and say yes. We could do that. Could have you ever? Have either of you play Bournemouth home games at Easter Road to get a bigger crowd in, like a franchise, uh-huh. like MK Dons? Hi, get them to come up here and play. Mm. Um, it's interesting. We were talking about Bournemouth, and he reckoned he says a European football in five years was the target. I think we talked about what success, John. That was one of the questions that you asked. Uh, so he was targeting <clears throat> European football for Bournemouth within five years, um, sort of following the blueprint of uh, Brighton. Assuming that European football for him was to come on the back of league placing, mm-hmm. would you quantify that as a success for him? Yeah. Well, yeah, it would be if that's what the if that's what the goal is, and then you achieve the goal, and that's you know relative success, isn't it? Aye. It's, it's a wee bit of a sticking point because I think that there's different views amongst the Hibs supporters to what success is. Like, of course I've, there I've is, yeah. A, I've, seen a, I've seen a comment previously that suggested I'm no bothered about league places. Like, nobody celebrates league places. You didn't get parades for league places. You get parades for... Uh, trophies. Cup, winning, win, for winning trophies. Mm. And I think... You're doing England now, though, eh? In, in England, it's because it, anybody that watches English football, it's like fourth place is better than a cup for some reason. Aye, because it goes to the Champions it. League, aye. It's a status thing, isn't it? Yeah. I, th- I think, well, long term, you're more likely to win a trophy if you're regular in Europe because you're, you're bringing in more money and you'd be able to attract better players. So if you want to win a trophy, then that's maybe your your starting point. You, you get that one. You've got, I think you've got more control almost. So it sounds ridiculous because you play fewer games to win a cup, but you don't care who you're going to get drawn against, etc. But, aye, but exactly. over the course of the season, you, you, you're... you're and you're susceptible to um, lose out to a one-off, you know, like a shock or whatever in a cup game. But over the season, yeah. you've got more control of how you you end up. So, if you, if you can manage it, to nice place. to say that. How can we not fucking win this cup? Five Aye, games. Five it's games. Five fucking matches. It's not even five in a row. It's not even like it's just five over fucking four months. Like how Aye. the fuck? You know? It's mental eh? how how difficult mm-hmm. it becomes. Yeah. Um. So anyway, the the. I think we're no further forward. I think a lot of us expected to kind of know what was happening today. Hibs now going to do the formal process, and they're still talking about them having to ratify at the uh, an AGM, the sale of the shares. But I'm not More sure. More ratification. That's, uh, I'm not sure. So they if have that's, to also make representation. Uh, I don't know if that's actual factual though, or because uh, somebody on uh, Hibs done it was suggesting you could do like a special meeting. It doesn't have to be an AGM. You could just do it in a meeting with the the appropriate shareholders there, and because the the, uh, the Gordons have got the majority, they should be able to just punt it through if they want it. Uh, so, see, that's that's the beauty of fan ownership, isn't it? You'd need ninety percent to, to 90%, do it. Ninety percent, that you know, aye. Postal votes and all that. That uh, kickback threads are an absolute hoot. So it is. Mm. Um, I've not read it yet. I've just seen some of the posts from it. Well, the, the good thing is, I believe at the AGM, their uh, chairman, uh, chairman, maybe the FOH chairman, uh, had said that this might be the way the football's going and they're going to look into it and see if they could benefit from it as well. Which yeah. obviously they've all just dismissed it on there. So for the 90%, to save face and not look like fucking idiots, yeah. they'll have to well, knock it back. I'm really intrigued to hear the, like, because fan ownership, fan ownership we're, we're the first fan doing, we're the biggest fan doing, all that. 
to then go, fuck it, sell it all. <laughs> it some, I'd be interested I to see how they would work, unravel <laughs> think, that one. Do you think when they do sell it, if, if sorry, do you think that if that was to come to pass that they're going to fill up their Burns piggy banks again that they were donating when it was looking really, really bad and having bake sales and what have you? But they get the money back for the sale. Do you imagine that? If a bill came and said, we'll buy the shares off you, you can refund everybody all the money that they put in. <laughs> Right. John, you were you were two pound a month, but you changed it to one pound over Christmas, Aye. and then you were up to a fiver when you were up flushing bonus. There's, there's, a, there's a cash cow flying past the window there. Um, ah, who cares what they do? But it looks like it's positive um, on on the face of him. So obviously, without recovering ground that we covered over the over the last episode, I think we are a step forward, and it, it it looks more likely to happen now. And I think you wouldn't have fully been quite you so be open. Talking about it. Aye, yeah. that's what you would say. Like, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be quite so open. Um, and if you look think... at the, there's a couple of articles on what he's done at Bournemouth since he's taken over, and you can see what he's done at Lorient. So Lorient are... Uh, Lorient. Lorient. Are, uh, are, st- are still <laughs> in quite a low league position. They've had a fair whack of money chucked at them to, to buy players. And with the direction of travel with players as well, I believe uh, Bournemouth bought a player for £15 million and immediately loaned them to them. Mm. So he was talking about us, us like, uh, kind of having to lose players to yeah. uh, to, to Bournemouth. There, there's an example of, like, imagine if we got a £15 million player coming in. They'd be, mm. can, uh, immediately be our best player. Or a ten, like a £5 million player. Aye. I mean, so, it's, it's, yeah. You guys are maybe a better place to answer this than me, because I, I really don't know. Fairman. Aye, I mean it's an up and coming, up and coming time. Yeah, all right, let's go with. What I meant was, if the representation results in the proposals being ratified, and Bill Foley becomes an investor and has a minority shareholder, correct me on my terminology if I'm wrong. Yeah, I'll go with that. What happens if he decides to sell it? What position does that put Hibs in? Does that mean that the Gordons have to buy it, or does that mean it kind of goes on to like the open market for just someone else to get involved? Just goes on the market until somebody buys it. Same as what's happened to the boy that that's got the twelve percent in it. They're selling it. Well, is it well, selling it? Is that just conjecture? I don't know. I've no idea. I've no read anything. I've just Aye. like whoever's selling them, the shares are now. It's the same. Aye. And if nobody wanted to buy them, they would just keep them. So right. Um, so his. So I, I guess what I'm what I'm trying to what I'm driving at here is that his or the Black Knight Group's investment in Hibs doesn't necessarily put Hibs in any sort of danger. Uh, no, I, I, I don't think they're going to load us with debt for it. Like if you look at uh, Lorient, they've no got uh, tons of debt. Bournemouth haven't got tons of debt on the back of them coming in and spending the money. It's no like you know the Glazers did it at Man United, where they bought the club with. The club's own debt. They pretty much say we're going to spend, I don't know, like half a billion pounds, but the club's going to pay for it. And then, you know, Man United ended up <clears> racing <throat> off with, with huge debt, which is a risk. Yeah. I don't think that's the, the, the setup here. I think the money that will go in will add value to the club, but will only be taken out at a later until it comes to selling. Or, you know, they may be reach a point where they can take dividends. You know, if the club is making enough money that they can sort of start kind of clawing it back that way or whatever. But that's a way down the line, I think. It's coincidental that you mention the Glazers because I was reading today that uh, Dermot Desmond, who's at Celtic, I believe, or has been at Celtic recently, he had a stake in Man United. He sold it to the Glazers and whatever it was. So I think as part of that, he was involved in Celtic, involved in Man United. So that kind of set the precedent for what Hibs are trying to do now. However, if Bill Foley was to try and increase his stake, Mike Ashley at Rangers the SFA knocked that back because of his ownership Aye. of Newcastle. He, he wanted to get to 29%, I think, which was obviously over the 25% threshold that Foley's looking at at Hibs. I think the landscape's changed now anyway in football uh, in, in Scotland. I think there's a bigger appetite for accepting it, but that, that's a conversation for another day. Um, very quickly, because we, we, we've exceeded our half-hour time limit, and the low Jeff might be wash, walking his dogs and thinking, this is good, keep singing it out a bit longer, lads. Um there's football to watch and stuff like that, so we want to wrap it up. Uh, St Johnson on Saturday, John, you did a bit of digging. How's the how's the game going to go? What I did was I had a look at our last six games against St Johnston. 
and sorry, our last six games at St Johnston, and it's actually quite pleasing on the eye. One four, drawn one, lost one. However, I also looked at the last six games that we've played Craig Levine, and two wins, two losses, two draws. I don't know what that means. I feel reasonably confident going to McDermott Park. Mm-hmm. Less confident with Craig Levine being in charge, just because he's anti-football, hates Hibs. Yeah. And the other surprising thing that I found out about him is that he's 59. I thought he was going to be older. Aye. Like, he seems to have been about for about mm-hmm. twice that amount of time. Do you think, Colin, that on Saturday he will look more or less like Angelo Sekathimu than the last time yeah. we saw him in the dugout? I reckon more, but I'm not sure if he'll have the carrier back. <laughs> but, but he might have. He might have. They're, they're, they're on a wee upturning for Mason Johnson on the back of uh, him going in, which is, is mental. But I, I don't think he's a great manager. I don't think St. Johnson's a great team. I think Hips will go and uh, win. You know how teams get that? Sorry, Colin, go on. No, no, you carry on. I'm just going to sum some of the predictions. I was going to ask something about the the new manager bounce. Like, I think we all know that teams get it. Have we got any sort of idea how long it lasts? Because it would be nice if St. Johnson have had that wee uptick in form and then have come along and um, pumped them 3-0. the bubble. Yeah. Aye, till, till now, pretty much. I think that they get, they get a few games left, but it reverts the type eventually. Like, the, the players that they get all of a sudden become much, much better players. Unless the last man has been like really poorly managing them, I suppose, and, and they, they had been underachieving massively. But I don't think St. Johnson are a good team. I, I would expect us to go beat them. I don't think the bounce will last long, uh, John, to answer your question. So I, I will predict 2-0 uh, to Hibs. John? I'm going to stick with 3-0 because I've had a bit stick of form it. recently. Uh, well, I know that me. that's... I know that that's Since probably we, different from what I said I mean, recently. You, aye, so you're literally sticking with it. You're changing it for nil-nil. <laughs> oh, no, but what I mean is I'm, I'm sticking with it as of two or three seconds ago. <laughs> Good. <laughs> aye. Um, I'm going to stick with my one nil that I said three weeks ago where we actually guessed it. Aye. What did I, what did I guess last time? 2-1. 2-1, all right. I'm going to shoot it. Yeah. Aye, because we've got defences tightened up since then. That's it. That's what I thought. You're actually just adjusting it based on. Oh, evidence. I had this. I think I had this down for a draw, Colin. Am I right? I know now. Previously, yeah. no, no. When we talked about it, cool. Okay. Pessimist. You were pessimistically optimistic, I think, or something. Aye, it's something like that. Aye. Which, just, which is uh, the name of the <laughs> Hedge's new album. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, that's uh, that's us out of time. Thanks everybody for uh, subscribing. Remember the competition if you want to get the tickets, and if you've already got a ticket yourself, you can win it and donate them to somebody else as well. Right, you're about to count something that's after two tickets. Um, aye, and, and get a bottle of gin as well while you're at it. Nice, and uh, aye, we'll see you next time. Don't get water, no.